major sponsors for Ableton on Air include Green Mountain Support Services of Vermont, Washington County Mental Health, Ale Israel. Major media sponsors for Ableton on Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Welcome to this edition of Ableton on Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. On, and, Ar and Arlene Seiler is here. Say hi, Arlene. Hello. Okay. On this edition, uh, we will talk about sports and people with disabilities and also sports and uh, the COVID vaccine. Um, with me to discuss um, sports is, uh, or with us to discuss sports, is Ron Rondon from Road Trip with Ron Rondon on Brooklyn Free Speech One TV. Uh, Ron, uh, welcome to Ableton on Air. Good. Hey, it's going wonderful. Yeah, How, how's it going? Um, I know sports has been really strange. Let's get into the interview here. I know sports has been really strange um, uh, lately yeah, due to the pandemic. Uh, first of all, why don't we do this? Can you explain, uh, for those that don't know, because I know you've been on the show before, um, and you are you know, you help us out here at Ableton on Air talking about sports. Um can you explain a little bit about your show and what your show is uh, All right. well, in right New York? Now, I'm, in my, uh, seven, I'm in the midway point, my seven season road trip right now. This is a lot of fun during the hosting the show. It's going to be fantastic here. Uh, we're talking about pop culture, anything, food, terrible events, a lot of surprises. Got some great music guests from um, from the place that we also know as the Rehab Cafe, but right now they're still full because of the pandemic. And then sometimes the... Uh, Now, Brick, Brick Arts Media is um, is the public access television station in Brooklyn, yes? Yes, it is. Can you explain a little bit about what they do? Well, this is a terrific, we have about over a number, about 610 hours of programming. A lot of programming from different shows, including Green Mike Show, and of course, they all got five financial Theater, and um, there is, uh, I can't remember a few other things. This is Jennifer Day Keeley, which I thought she's no longer with us there. But there is a number of other shows. It's been so fantastic to serve our community down in Brooklyn and all across the Brooklyn area. And also, you can check it out online as well on social media, on regularmedia.org. We, we, we will give the. We, we're going to give. Ron, 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 uh, we're going to give that at the end of the show. Um, so talk about a little bit more about, um, so what's going on in the world of sports? That's why we, main reason why we have you today. Um, well, well there's a number of things I have to talk about. For example, we're happy that, uh, you know, for the last nine, ten months, we have no crowds on, in sports. And I'm just seeing, and you've seen, you've seen before, the Mets baseball games, the basketball games, they have cardboard cutouts of people right there. Mm -hmm. And that will donate to a lot of good charities, a lot of good organizations. That was just nice about it. And then sometimes we also saw a basketball game. They have the one with the virtual, you no, know, virtual screen that be everything virtual, and there's a crowd and everything else. Well, I'm happy now that the the crowd is going to be back inside the arena and they with a 10 percent capacity, and that is, that's going to be just a perfect time to get it. But there is a catch to the whole thing, and you know about that now, Larry. You have to bring you have to bring a signed piece of paper that you already took a COVID nineteen shot. 
and still allows you into the building. And that's and it's the main thing. You, yeah, because and, uh, from what I also understand, uh, according to the Super Bowl, um, there was uh, twenty two thousand fans. Yeah. In in the um, arena uh, for the Super Bowl, but I I guess everybody had a negative shot. Yeah. So why don't we talk a bit a little bit about the Super Bowl um, about oh, the matchup? Oh, oh. And, and you know I'm also in shock too because I'm, I'm very pleased that we had crowd. Lucky we're bringing the crowd back to the to the stadium back then. But here's the another nice thing about this: they brought 7,500 frontline workers who already had their uh, shots during the COVID-19, and they came. And these are all heroes, by the way. And I want to thank them for what you've done across the country and here in back in Vermont and here in New York. They came from everywhere. 7,500 people to see a great Super Bowl game and a great after performance and you remember the weekend to have yeah. on that. It was a lot of fun seeing this year. But I want to say to my knowledge, congratulations to Tampa Bay because I won with Kansas City. But there's something that I did not see this coming. And I want to say why. I think why I said that. Go ahead. Okay. Tom Brady. Now the greatest of all time. He has seven Super Bowl victories already. Nobody ever passes in like this. The second thing, Mr. Ritter, outstanding job coming out of Tom Brown. I was going to go see him today. He won a Super Bowl. But here's the, but here's the big thing about this. Did not have the summit. If you remember last year in Super Bowl, we have a first female head coach. I mean, first female assistant coach. Yeah. For San Francisco, well, they lost. This year, we have seen history. We have history in the making. The assistant and strength conditioning coach, Malal Javasir, is one. And the other one, Lori Luckett, are definitely the first two lady coaching staff members winning a Super Bowl. It's never happened before. I didn't see this coming. The other thing I didn't see, and I'm very happy too. We have a first ever female referee in a Super Bowl game. Short and that and that Super Bowl, by the way, is a, a lot of it's a lot of first, a lot of history. And I've never seen a very and, proud and, of and also the NFL's yeah. made history uh, lately as well. Um it, According to CNN, um, the NFL, as of um, January 24th, 2021, uh, Robert, uh, his name is Robert Sala, S-A-L-E-H. He is the right. first new head coach for the New York Jets, making history as the first Muslim American. And that's fantastic to see to anyway. Lead, to lead the first Muslim American to lead the national, the NFL. And you think? Now you think now you think that's great. See, this is what we say. This is a land of opportunity. I don't care what that no good Trump said about glad he's gone. But I'm gonna say this is open the door to everybody in the big future. If it's the future of the NFL, if it's the future of the NBA. And if you remember one Because time, now it's giving people right now, right now. now it's giving you people more head coach. Mm hmm She she did she is the first ever woman um, in room head coach because of the problem that um, I forget his name um um Baka Papa Bubovic who in there Papa Bish is a great Papa Bish who left and represented and then they had him took over as the first ever female coach and the an in room head coach. This has never been happening like this before. Everything like you said is his first we think history this year, even even during this pandemic, it is definitely history. That's why I always like to say that. Yeah. Speaking about, um, and this is Black History Month too. Um, speaking about um, sports, the, is there anything going on with the? Because I'm on their page, the New York Liberty. Yeah. Is there anything going on uh, with the basketball with the New York Liberty, which happens to be a um. A, uh, a women's basketball team for the WNBA. They will still be basketball. 
back next year. Well, they're still be back in May, so if they have a good chance to uh, get a better player. They're going to be a better runway coach. If they need an assistant coaching staff, that can help a lot, and that's very important. Mm-hmm. What's with the net? What's with the Brooklyn Nets this year? Oh my God! I'm saying I am surprised the Nets are done stupendous already. Because look, you got you got Harden and you got Durant, and I don't know who the other player is. But I'm saying this and saying what's the ball. This is the best goddamn team. I'm mean, looking at watch your language. And if you look at the league too, watch your language. Watch your language, please. Watch your language, please. Thank you. Um, uh, as far as the New York Yankees, let's talk about baseball. I know we're jumping around. But yeah. um, this was a hard season for the New York Yankees. You want to talk about the New York Yankees? Well, you know, and, Yankees and baseball, baseball in general, better, baseball in general. They can work something about their outstanding year as the, as a Yankee team and a good franchise. I think this is going to be a good season because last year they won first place. They almost went these, but I think they deserve another chance to get the post 162. But here's the one thing we're afraid of. This is about the pandemic, and I know we're still doing this anyway. But sometimes games could get postponed because of pandemic reasons. Sometimes they do. So hopefully we want to uh, make it before games are cut. And sometimes, if I'm correct, sometimes before November or the the third November, that's my guess. But if I can go to take a gamble, I will just say at the beginning of October. So the first what about baseball in general? What do you think about this whole the, the pandemic and not having fans in the stands, etc.? I know, I know. With, with no fans in the stands, <laughs> until, that, until the day with the World Series, if we remember back then in October, we have about 11,000 fans in this uh, stadium. This has no fans because when you look at the stadiums that with all these cardboard cutouts, it's like that. But if you remember when Fox Sports did something unusual, very creative, they used with a computer generated crowd. If you see a computer generated crowd with the fans, like they look, they look real, but they're computer generated. This yeah. And this is what the crowd looks like. And then seeing them, it's like it's like a real stadium. But that's not the point. But I, the length of the we like to see fans back as well, and the same thing as the uh, same thing as uh, soccer and every soccer fans where they have no fans either. Yeah. Uh, like Since the Premier League and the Italian, uh, the Italian League series are, and of course the I think the German Bong uh, Bolita or something like that. So we, these are they they have death without a crowd, and this is what we're all talking about, and we hope. By the time of this pending all day, you want to bring fans. That's like end of the family. That's what we talk about. And you know we want to see with people who are diehard fans, and they have to do everything they have to do. Um, since how, since we're talking about how was hockey season this year? Well, I'm, I'm happy so far. The Islanders uh, are doing very well. Oh, and, okay. and of course, this is their final season at the National College team, by the way. Uh, so what's going to happen after that? Where are they going to go? They'll be heading to the UBS Arena near Belmont Park. Oh, wow. That's in Elmont, New York. And they're just about to building a brand new indoor stadium. And it's just amazing. I'll show you the picture uh, once I send it to you. And you, if you had it, you said about that. It's a um, so speaking... stadium. It is right there at the Holy House of New York Islanders playing in their home stadium. And it's going to start sometime in uh, October 2021. No, no. Speaking about sports, um, let's talk about, and we'll get back to hockey in a minute. Uh, recently, back in January, Hank Aaron passed away. He was one of the greatest uh, players of all time because yeah. uh, when you look back at, at great history, with great milestones, and I remember the night, I was a kid back there when I was eight years old, Watching that Monday night game between, I think it's I think it's the San Diego Padres, 
Hank Aaron came up to the bat, and I've never seen a terrific hitter. He got 714, but when he got the 715 home run, that was that was a real miracle. We have seen history. Their parents were there. Their fans were there. He hit it right to the rest of the corner, and then it just. And, and I think, and I think there was another. Uh, but when you look back at all his history, and then looking at his congratulatory to Barry Bonds, who broke the record, mm-hmm. this is why I think he is definitely the past torch. But he says the torch is now passed. You are now the greatest of all time. And and and, and, and I, I think back. I think. But first of all, I think he still is the greatest of all time because Hank I, Aaron. I think also back in 2020, another baseball um, person that yeah. was it was it was it Yogi Berra or Phil Rizzuto? Who who? who? Yeah, he went out by Tom Seaver. Oh oh, it was Yogi Berra who passed away? Yeah. Oh, you know, nobody told me, nobody even told me Yogi Berra passed away. Huh? No, nobody, nobody even told me. But Hold on, one second. I'll, I'll, I'll get it real quick. Real quick. All right, but I'm gonna tell you one other player does pass away. Was Tom Seaver, one of the greatest baseball yeah, pitchers of all time. No, no, no. Uh, Yo, Yogi Berra didn't die. Uh, it was he died in 2015. But go ahead. What were you saying? Tom, well, Tom Seaver, he did pass away uh, sometime during the summer. Yeah. Because he had COVID nineteen because of COVID nineteen. And yep. he was 74 years old. I mean, we dedicated a lot of outside uh, time to go away, right outside City Field. And then we mm-hmm. put a lot of our gifts and everything else, and it was a lot to be proud that we've seen a great, great ball player, great picture, one of the greatest of all time. So, uh, so uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, August 31st, Tom Seaver. Um, November 17, 1944 to August 31st, 2020. Right. He was nick. He was nicknamed the franchise. Yeah. And he's an outstanding. And he's an outstanding pitcher. I'll say one of the best pitchers ever. As a great, great pitcher. And I say, I say he's Hall of Famer. He's Hall of Famer all the way. He went from New York, from Mets to uh, Cincinnati to the Chicago White Sox. Ends up being a broadcaster for the last, I don't know how many years, about five, six years with Jeff with the eleven, and then he retired after all of it. Do you think, speaking about sports, do you think um, uh, baseball is, well, baseball changed, you know, people get traded all the time, um, but do you think baseball is going to, or sports, for that matter, is going to get back to its original? Or is it going to be really hard to really get back after COVID? Well, I, to my opinion, I think it's going to be very hard because, remember, this is a very time to rebuild life, our lives together. And I think to be rebuilding this uh, team during COVID, like uh, during COVID-19 and all kinds of stuff, I think it's time to rebuild this whole uh, thing all over again and hopefully want to get the fans back to because we want to get a full class. I know that's the best start. But when we get back together and everything is normal and without any more COVID, any more violence playing around, yeah. and get the final back, I think it's a good time for it. That's true, yeah. Well, sports broadcasting has changed. To the stadium, you know, to, to see the games, you know. Well, he, yeah. Well, one of the things I also want to talk about um well, the stadiums haven't been the same, but um, do you I'm think... So, I'm, so I'm so Special Olympics is the same problem. No, but no, as far as baseball and, and getting in the stadium, Ron, do you think... Um, uh, let's talk about this for a minute. Uh, revenue, for, for yeah. example, one of the biggest things that the Bronx went is going through now, Bronx has Yankee Stadium, Okay. And recently, the borough president um, said that Yankee Stadium or the Yankees, you know, the ball club itself, hasn't been paying um, uh, in and around Yankee Stadium. Like, they didn't, haven't paid the taxes and stuff. You know, I, I guess it's because of COVID. But the ballpark itself 
Okay, tickets have been real expensive. Um, the ballpark itself, uh, for a hot dog uh, and, and a pretzel, for example, the prices are just absolutely crazy. I know, it's skyrocketing. It's like about, about 8 to $10 of item. Like, for example, hot dogs are like 8 to $10. Sometimes there is a burger. Can like I, 15 20 dollars even one of my favorite places right there, Johnny Rockets, that's inside that stadium. Oh, God. They tell you on game day. This is crazy about the prices on those But it, it never, it never, it, I mean, for example, if a family of four, a family of five, you, um, matter of fact, I'll get you the true price. Family of four, family of five. Um, it, it's like $500 by the time you finish. Yeah, you better you better fly out to eat. Exactly. But I remember um, one stadium before they said you buy the ticket and you get the football and a football too because this is also good because yeah, you get to pay one price like about twenty five to thirty dollars. Yeah. and then you get and you get the ticket and you get the free vulture for a hot dog or anything. It, it is it is a nice deal, but uh, you know, for me, I go for the regular price and I go out for dinner. Toronto Blue Jays, this is 2019 schedule. Toronto Blue Jays, New York Yankees. Tickets started at 135. Right. You know, the, the, the highest seats. I mean, it's just, at, the cheapest seats is like $14. That's but the, the further you go fun. up, or the further, the further you go in the middle, and then, and then you're adding food, it's, it gets, it gets like five, six hundred dollars. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Anything you want to say about that? Any, any more you want to say about that? I, I would, I would say not gonna be this. But if you, if I, if I was you, excuse me, if I was you and I could go for cheaper stuff, I could go to a minor league ball game myself. The one that cost me like uh, six or seven dollars to get in the stadium, like on the bleacher seats, and then fifteen, fifteen dollars the high one, and then you can buy your food for about mm, if I can see the math. Sometimes the hot dog about four dollars. Sometimes like uh, if you buy a ten dollars voucher with a food, that's not good. Right? That's a good thing too. So compared what? to the stadium, the major stadium to a minor league stadium, if you buy like about um, about fifteen compared to the thirty-five, I'll tell you about thirty twenty bucks for it. But probably you, I could go for a minor league payment, watch the game minor league, and you get close to my home. And that's how we got our up in the pipeline right here at um, MCU Park, one of the best stadiums here. And that's why it's not open last year because they canceled the okay, entire uh, minor league season because of the COVID 19 situation. But we still have our defending champion, the Brooklyn Cyclones, in one of the Way back then. So then we'll be probably we'll be back open and start the minor league table because that's my only thing I want to see um this year. Yeah. Actually according according to twenty twenty stats here, New York Mets cost uh hot one hot dog in in City Field. Yeah. New York Mets eleven dollars. That's that's expensive right there and then. A uh, 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 a smallest a small beer. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. A sm I'm talking about beer. A small beer offered at New York Mets Stadium costs eleven dollars. Um, uh, I don't know how much that is. It, it, six dollars, I guess. Six six seventy five for oh. a, a hot dog at Yankee Stadium. It's it, but it, the price has gone up slightly. 
Plus, if you got like four or five people, they're going to want like two, three hot dogs. You can't just survive on one dog. Yeah, and it's crazy because that's so much fun. And that's like, I went to a thing here one time, and it was just very sad because I never been inside the you know, until I went in there first, and it was it was a great game. But when you buy food there and look at the prices, because they don't the, allow you, the they they there, um, the right there. they don't allow you to turn around and bring your own food in. That's no, the I issue. Because the guy didn't bottle water. Well, at least they got me with a bottle of water, so that's good. But not with the food or soda, anyway. Yeah. And. 1989 stats, okay? Yeah. Um, this is 1989, 90, something like that. Actually, no. 2019 season. Uh, we're talking yeah. 2019 season. Uh, yeah. Chicago Cubs. A family of four, family of four can fork over uh, between $234.38 and 38 cents to three hundred and seven. Wow. To the to three hundred and seventy dollars in food alone. The three three hundred and seventy is the Arizona Diamondbacks. That's so much money. It's so much because there's a lot of money for it. Plus there's a point plus there is a point food right there as well. But that's not including souvenirs, that's not including parking, because I'm sure parking isn't free. Uh -huh. You know. Yeah, and it's and it's so expensive. Like I said, expensive stuff is going to be crazy. And think about soon, like, if you look at inside the space, like, if you look inside the uh, the arenas as well, they're in the same. They're also in the same. Suge like, suggestion. Like, 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 like a Yankee or a Ranger mm. game. Uh, there is uh, the same thing as like Rockwell's about ten bucks, eight dollars for soda, eleven for the beer. It's a full flight for major stadium. It's Really too much to stand, and you can't know about that. Suggestion to, to oh boy. Suge yeah. Suggestion to to all our our fans. Uh, eat before you uh, go. Um, to the stadium. Yeah, I say the same thing. Yeah. Eat before you go to the stadium. Yeah, because highway robbery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I wonder how much the, the, does it sell food at the Barclays Center? What was that? Well, well, Barclays Center, um, Ron. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Well, I want to say this. But I want to say I want to say this to the fans. That for the next time you go to a thing, this is what I want to say to the fans everywhere. If I were to say to the fans and everywhere else, Make sure to exercise with caution because make sure bring enough money, number one. Number two, if you think of the food is too much, if I were you and if I was a betting guy, I would not get the food here. I could go to a restaurant at the after the game. So yeah, or, or, um... And, and because I wanted to go with it because instead of buying and saving, waste your money right there and then, mm. I was going to go to the restaurant after the game and Okay, well, we're going to go about another, basically, we're going to go about another 10, 50, about another 20 minutes here. We're going to go a little bit over, because we want to cover a couple more things. Um, So let's get back to, um, let's get back to hockey, if you want, and um, how's the hockey season? Well, well, let's see, what's about one new season? I know it's only 56 games this year for the uh, NHL this year. But there's still at 31 teams, but we're still waiting about that the 32nd team will be joining the uh, the franchise next year. And that's who is the Seattle Kraken, which I have never heard of seeing myself. But they're, they're representing Seattle, and it's right near the border between Seattle, Washington, and then the British Columbia. Mm. And they'll be starting uh, their season in October for to join the NHL franchise. Because I was looking at the, some of the teams that Seattle is looking for as a franchise. This is their this is their best. This is going to be their new um, challenge between uh, Hollywood State uh, between all the NHL teams, and then we're hoping it's going to be like a new Western Division, for example. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's going to be a, there's going to be a few things to check out with because if I was a, a betting guy over the NHL. 
I think I'd love to see the first two teams. I know they won't not the NFL, but will they ever try extending the game because it's going to be 82, but will they ever extend it to a end like a further three or four games so in season yeah. compared to the 82 games because if they yeah. Um. We, well, yeah. Ho- hockey hasn't been the same. I mean, you know, I mean, we we've had some hockey greats, Wayne Gretzky, you know, uh, several several hockey greats. But um, it you know it just hasn't been the same. You know, sports. Any sport, any sport. You know, I, I guess the Special Olympics too hasn't been the same. No. Spe- well, Special well, Olympics. I'm, I'm, Special Olympics yeah. actually. Special Olympics actually got canceled um, here in Vermont uh, due to COVID. Oh, wow, yeah. And also, yeah. also uh, we have a team called the Vermont Mountaineers. That. Which is that, a baseball team. Huh? Which is uh, the baseball team? Yeah. They're a baseball team. The Vermont yeah. Mountaineers actually got canceled this year, the whole season, uh, because it's basically a college team. Yeah. So, but uh, they, you know, they go all. They're a local college team. They have college players, but they've um, um, canceled their season because of the COVID, and and also. Um, a lot of these sports, a lot of the Vermont sports. Lake Monsters, too, also. Yeah, um, the Lake Monsters, but also a lot of the Vermont sports. Um, as a matter of fact, the UVM sports, um, they're like at 25% capacity, but a lot of yeah. them are, the seasons are not so good because of COVID. It's, it's really strange. It is strange. Yeah. So, that's, that's um. That is the worst part when you lose, when you lose like great fans. Especially when you're yeah. losing revenue, that's the the mo- the most difficult part. Um, when when you count, yeah, when when these um, concession stands, I mean, um, they're paying people, but yeah, when, yeah. when these concession stands need money and these people need to get paid because they have families. And then you cut everything off, as, uh, you know. I mean, you can't live on air. I mean, they say God's going to take care of everything, but people have to find other jobs. You know? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It certainly is. Anyway, I'm looking at some of the, uh, I'm looking at some of the most important things about baseball with season because let me tell you, when we had the teams that represented the New York 10 League and there was the teams that represented the they cancel every single baseball team across the country, and yeah. it will be, well, it won't be anything, but uh, hopefully we're looking at some of the progress. They can build the progress for, uh, for later this season. There will be a very big challenge, a big challenge coming up very soon, because we're looking at uh, some of the teams that we're looking at. Uh, for example, the you know, we got our, our baby bombers. on your end since you're in New York um, now about COVID because a lot of the stadiums are being used uh, Barclay Center uh, Yankee Stadium a lot of the stadiums of course, are- of course. the Barclay Center of course they still have not heard them yet but they also got the New York Liberty playing right here at the Barclay Center this year and we are very happy that the, the WNBA is going to have 
that's what we well, well, I'm that. talking about I'm talking about the vaccines. Do you know anything about um the you know how people can um contact for the vaccines at the stadiums because I know that uh I know that um City Field is being used in Yankee Stadium and so on. Well, I think we have a contact address. You can check it out too. You can uh, check it out at nyc.gov slash health slash corner pirates. Mm-hmm. And they will have some information, though, some new information about where you get tested, where you get a shot of uh, the coronavirus. But right now, at this point, there's going to be senior citizens and workers right now bring their part of it. And then we're hopefully soon it's going to be everybody, including me, with all the kids. And it will be, it will be, it will be a game changer. But thanks to mm-hmm. President Biden, I think they did speed up the production. And it's simple. The sooner they get it, the better. we will get all the infections, all the get shot. And hopefully we're going to end this crazy nightmare. But this whole, because we're all over here into this nightmare based on cold corner virus. But we want hopefully want to end it sooner or later. Okay, so let's let's um so let's really quick so let's really quick uh, go over where people can uh, uh you know um contact you for but first uh what are you working on now uh, with uh, road trip? Well, tonight's episode is gonna be a, a game show studio way back, and I thank to my partner our Church to send them a lot of our episodes. From um, Brooklyn Free Speech Network to bring it to, to here, because he did some shows over at a what's supposed to be Manhattan East Jewish Center, and he taped a lot of those kids' game shows. Since they didn't air, didn't make it on air, they did it to me, and we're going to show you some episodes on air from all these uh, great game shows. And we'll be checking some fun this week. Uh, this week, by the way, the game show is called Flip Decision. It's like taking this about the game show, it's like family field. It's a yeah. counselor, they will have surveys. It's going to be a lot of fun because it's a great show. Um, I'll tell you, we've also got some music performances. Um, we have some recent tape shows back at the Green House Cafe. And when one, we had one group also perform that the logo. And the group is, I can't remember the group, but this is the thing. And I'm very welcome to have a political and we have a group. One of my guys, John Kay, who performed and invited me to perform. And you're going to see all that very soon on a couple of books. But um, we will definitely uh, get you guys on one of the episodes on the uh, Right to Cooking Show, for example. And you send it to me and we'll, we'll show it on here one of these days. It's going to be just fantastic. And on top of everything, we'll have some, some good games that I'll be doing. I hope when Rick reopens. I'll be doing a couple game shows with them, with uh, Greg, which we're going to be hosting the revised, you know, our game show from Classic, including You Don't Say. And we want to, I know some of the dedication of one of our favorite men, Tom Kennedy. And by the way, Kate, actually, one of the persons, and this is the one, I know you're really talking about, but I wanted to tell you, the person that sent me, I want to give a big shout out to the gentleman who was back to you, sent me a board game called You Don't Say. Mm-hmm. And it was a 1963 board game that was from our cousin Old Island. And I took a picture of it, and we'll do show it here on the air as well. It's a board game that was based on the NBC game show. And it was a lot of fun watching it because I'm a big fan of game shows myself. Okay, so, now, so where can people uh, reach you for sports and for different information for a road trip? Thank you. And I'm going to go very quickly and tell you. That both of new episodes will be uh, Friday morning, 4.30 a.m. to 5 a.m. And then the encore presentation from 11.30 to midnight, our usual time. And from Brooklyn Free Speech One and online at www.brickartsmedia.org slash one. And you can check it out on YouTube and on Twitter. And we'll show you all the photos and videos also on our brand new Instagram site called Okay, well, we would like to thank Ron Rondon of Ron Rondon's uh, of Road Trip with Ron Rondon on um, Brooklyn's Free Speech One for joining us on Able Den On Air. And, um, 
you know, keep doing your show. It's very important to get the messages, uh, your message out there. Um, uh, keep, up the, keep up the good work like you do, Lawrence and Arlene. And we'll hopefully get together one of these days soon on video. Hopefully we'll get on Zoom conferencing. We'll hopefully be back sooner or later. Okay. Well, um, Arlene, any, anything else you want to say before we end? Well, I want to give a shout-out to a lot of our friends here and uh, to everybody at Brick Arts Media. And we know, we know it's a tough year and we know it's so much going on. But we'll hope once again we'll get together soon and, of course, be free awards. It's going to be very slow. It's going to be very slow. But keep watching. You'll give it, we'll pass on the link to Arlie and Larry. And you know, Chris okay, and um, get, can you give your information? One last time, please, for Road Trip. Here it is. It's Friday morning, 4.30 a.m. to 5 a.m. On court presentation Friday night, 11.30 p.m. to midnight. It will be on Brooklyn Free Street Network, on Optimus 67, on RCN 84, on, uh, let's see, Verizon File 42, 1995 on Spectrum, and also online at www.brick.com. Anything else you want to say, Arlene, before we end? Arlene, is there anything? I, think, I hope that this year the baseball will be okay. I hope. I hope it's back because that's what I'm hoping for. So keep watching, folks. It's going to be great. Okay, well, uh, we would like to thank Ron Rondon from uh, Brooklyn Free Speech One for joining us on, on this edition of Able Done On Air. For more information on... Anything that you've seen on Ableton on Air, including this episode uh, that we're going to edit and give to our viewers, you can go to www.orcamedia.net. That um, email, once again, is www.orcamedia.net. That's O R C A Media, M E D I A dot net. Well, this puts an end to this edition of Ableton on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm on inside. See you next time for another exciting yeah. edition of Able to Run Air. We would like to thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others. See you next time. Major Sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services of Vermont, Washington County Mental Health, Al Air Israel. Major media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify.